does the person you are with encourage you to read you have to ask what does he bring for me roses or books if someone has a stake in making you better that person will push you towards books books are what we all need when you say mass extinction what do you really mean we were just some years ago we were 6 billion people now we are 8 billion people i mean been continuously growing what is mass extinction there is a certain natural rate at which species go extinct every day so there is a rate that rate has increased by almost 1000 times in the last 100 years even as uh, we have been speaking over the last hour or so thousands of species have gone extinct in just just this time slot i'm not talking of individual members of those species being lost i'm talking of entire species disappearing forever that's what is happening and that's happening uh, because of uh, reasons that are man made anthropogenic so we have raised the average temperature of this planet by 1.5 degree centigrade and the temperature is increasing at an increasing rate the carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere should naturally be around 280 ppm it has shot up to around 450 ppm now and all that has happened only in the last 50 to 100 years i said sixth extinction phase of the previous 5 three were caused due to an abundance of carbon dioxide the same thing that we are seeing today i have to speak of it because nobody speaks of it ideally if we were a conscious species this would have been all over the media this would have been the thing that uh, uh, organizations colleges schools governments international institutions all should have been taking up as the topmost priority but we are not doing that if you uh, if you just read the uh, the kind of forest cover that we are losing every day it would come as a horrible shock and a lot of that is exactly because we have gone up from 6 billion to 8 billion every new addition every fresh addition to our species actually means a death warrant for at least 10000 members of other species the moment a human kid is born several thousand other organisms animals plants are condemned to death that's that's where we stand and the global temperature that has risen by 1.5 degrees is not going to stop at 1.5 or even 2 or probably even at 3 it might rise to 4 or 5 degrees centigrade and the results are going to be catastrophic and all that is going to happen within our lifetimes i'm talking of the next few decades so human species will be wiped out probably not probably not probably a few would remain uh, few would remain to lament i i notice that you are simultaneously also lamenting that we are too many uh 8 billion people and at the same time you're saying mass extinction on the horizon are we complaining that 
That's a, that's a natural fallout. That, and and we, we are not seeing that. The earth simply does not have enough resources to sustain 8 billion or 10 billion or 11 billion of us. You see, we don't How many can the earth sustain? Depends on the quality of life that you define for yourself. You see, we don't merely exist. We exist to consume, right? That's what a human being does. If you look at a chimpanzee or a deer or a lion, its consumption footprint has not changed over the centuries or the millennia. A monkey today consumes as much, only as much as it used to several thousand years back. But human beings, today the existence of a human being means a very different thing to the planet than it did 5000 years back. So it's not as if the earth cannot sustain 8 billion human beings, it can, but not at the current levels of consumption. At the current levels of consumption, not even a dozen earths suffice and that's mathematical, that's not subjective, that's not something that uh, I'm saying or fearing, that's pure arithmetic, right? Anybody can work out the numbers. Not only that, such a bad philosophy has been fed into us by our education system that we think that the purpose of life is happiness and happiness comes through consumption. So not only are we consuming, we want to consume even more. And the more you consume, the more prosperous you are taken to be and the more respectable you are. And if a nation consumes a lot, it is considered a developed nation, right? GDP has become the criteria of development. So all that uh, portents uh, a lot of horror in the horizon. So what should be the yardstick to measure development of human society? We live within ourselves, no? So we require only as much stuff outside as would be conducive to inner development, you see. So we don't need air conditioners? You do need air conditioners if you think that without an air conditioner, your meditativeness uh, would be obstructed. All religions in the world claim to know this truth. They claim to know the enlightenment. <coughs> like Hinduism, Islam, Christianity, all of them seem to know. So are we saying that religions across the world have failed to pass on this knowledge system or this awareness or this consciousness? See, when you say, say religion, what exactly do you mean? How many people read their religious books? In the name of religion, what you mostly have is culture and tradition. Hmm? How many Christians are scholars of the Bible or have even gone through the Bible at least a couple of times? How many Hindus have actually even seen a copy of the Vedas, forget about reading, forget even about touching. How many Hindus have actually even seen a copy of the Rig Veda? So what do you mean by religion? Religion is simply hearsay. Religion is grape wine. Religion is gossip and rumor. Religion is something that you have seen your parents and their parents do. So of what good can be such religion? This is, this is just rumor mongering. Somebody says, oh, religion says this, religion says that. Where does religion say that? And to top it all, you have a class of priests who have their own vested interests. And, and that, that class exists across all religions. And they, they present religion to you as it would suit your ego and their interest. So there is no religion. Religion can possibly provide an answer if one can penetrate the, the, the outer shells of religion and uh, enter its core. That's where uh, you find stuff that is uh, life affirmative, that is joy giving. Hmm? But, uh, <clears throat> but nobody, nobody is going there. So in a way, are you saying that science has encouraged 
more materialism, more consumption, and taking us to the path of science mass is beautiful. Science is lovely. In fact, people are uneducated even in science. We need much, much more science. See, the problem does not lie in the fact that science exists. In fact, science needs to be strengthened much, much more. Than religion? Please understand, these are two different domains. In the external domain, if you want to know, you need science. If you want to understand how uh, this screen functions, that camera functions, that gadget functions, how uh, are these pillars able to hold this ceiling where it is, then you need science, right? So science has its own legitimate domain. We live within us, right? Third, fourth time, we, we must return to this fact. And that's a domain that science very respectfully refuses to enter. Science does not go into the state of the subject. Science studies the objective universe. This object, that object, that object. The subject, that is me, is something that science respectfully refuses to touch. That's where spirituality begins. When you want to ask, who am I? Who is the one looking at science? Who is the one wanting to reap the, 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 the fruits and rewards of science? Hmm? So science is a great thing in my hands. And what I'll do with science depends on my inner state. If you, if you allow a madman to <clears throat> hold the, the keys to a nuclear arsenal, you know what you would get, right? And that's the condition of humanity. A lot of, uh, a lot of destructive potential, a lot of power in the external world, without any wisdom to know what to do with that power. So, uh, as would be obvious, we are using that power to annihilate ourselves and all other species along with ourselves. So, science and religion, as you rightly pointed out, they pertain to two different aspects of mankind. If that is the reality, I want to understand why does Acharya Prashant call himself or uh, as you are known to be a practitioner of Advait? What does that mean? In very simplistic terms, Advait means that the trueness that you experience that makes you rush again and again towards the world will be of very little use to you. Advait is non-duality, right? So even non-duality is defined keeping duality at the center, right? Advait, non-duality. We all experience duality, two-ness. So there is me, I think. I think there is me. And I think there is that banana and that gold and that something else and that woman and that and that. that. So there is this two-ness. There is me and there are those goodies out there. And the natural biological urge is to say, if I get those things, then my restlessness would be healed. That's two-ness. Advait is to realize that the cure does not really lie out there. Your relationship with uh, the world has to be founded on a different ground. It cannot be founded on the ground of desire. You cannot say, I'm restless and if I get that, that would uh, give me peace. Hence, that constitutes or that, that founds my relationship with the world. If that is a relationship with the world, uh, then that's a very exploitative kind of relationship. And that's what we all have, right? An exploitative relationship with the world. 
and because the world consists of as we see other people they want to exploit us back so mutually it becomes a game of violence adwait would mean my relationship with the world has to be in a way that helps me enter my interiority the world is not an end the world cannot be my destination or target the world can at best be a means to help me penetrate into myself hmm? and that constitutes a healthy and fair relationship with the world that's non duality one can speak of non duality in very uh, sublime terms as well and very esoteric very mystical but uh, that would not be very useful so in this non duality science and religion in a way are one in this non duality science finds its proper utility now science does not exist to appease me now science exists to help me fulfill myself you see uh, there there is mobile phone right it's a product of technology if i do not know myself i'll use the mobile phone for all the the wrong purposes and what do i mean by wrong not morally wrong not legally wrong wrong in the sense that the use will decimate me hmm? i'll be using it to to just reduce myself to an animal and that's uh, what most of us do right products of science and we use them in very self destructive ways on the other hand that mobile phone can be used in very very um, sublime ways ways that elevate the consciousness you pick up the phone and there's the internet and all the great wealth of wisdom is available on the internet so you could use the mobile phone for uh, that as well but we don't do that when <clears throat> you are clear inside when there is non duality inside then you know what to do with science 